the message tonight is going to be a good message. And I pray that that you just listen. And, and after you listen, that you pray. And after you pray, that you dissect it. Uh, tonight, we're talking about Jonathan and David. David and Jonathan. 1 Samuel 18, verse 1. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up Miss Alexandria, mighty God. I lift up all our partners. Let this word come alive tonight. 1 Samuel 18, 1, in the name of Jesus. And it came to pass. When he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. So in the Bible, we have that the hearts of Jonathan and the hearts of David, they were knit together. Have you ever had a bestie, a friendship that your hearts were knit together, that that it was like you would you didn't even need an alarm. You didn't even need to text you would just call each other because you had each other on each other's hearts. And, and, and here we have in the Bible where even though Samuel was, or even though Saul, King Saul was out to kill David, he still honored Jonathan, the prince guy. So it says, and it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. Guys, when we're talking about covenant guys, what 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 is the soul it's the activity of character it's the activity of will it's the activity of your life all of a sudden uh, uh you 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 like somebody you're loving towards somebody it says that their hearts were knit two people we're talking about covenant and their hearts were knit i pray that you remember your friendships that your hearts were knit tonight for 2024 I pray a lot of people are like, oh, I pray I walk on water. Oh, I pray that uh, I cast those devils out. Oh, I pray I go into the and grab that fish and take the money out of the fish. Oh, I pray I, 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 I lay hands on the on the sick and they recover. But for us, for 2024, we want to enter in and say, God, before we enter in, God, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, give me remembrance of all my partners, mighty God, all my friends, my best friends, mighty God. In the name, all those that started with us when we began and they fell off, they felt they fell off, mighty God, somewhere along the line, somewhere, somewhere on this journey, mighty God. All those that we had our hearts knit. What does it mean to be knit? A league together. God wants us to walk in covenant. He wants us to accept his covenant. But how are we going to accept his covenant if we don't even respect covenant here on earth with each other? Father, I pray that that we would have a, a league with our best friends, with Curbside Community Center, with uh, Desiree Burns, mighty God. Their hearts were knit. And it says that Jonathan loved him as his own soul. He was friends with them. Are you checking up on your old friends? Are you loving? Are you? Do you consider your old friends family? Or the minute they don't show up to your Bible study, you're like, I'm out. Are you lovable? That's what covenant is, is to continue, continuing to be lovable, guys. Now, pay attention. This is going to open up right here in the name of Jesus. Um, so there's a war that goes on and Saul the king and his son, the prince, Jonathan, they die in battle. And time goes by. And now David is the king. 2 Samuel 9, and David said, is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I might show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Is there any children of my partners? Maybe some of my partners are no longer with us. They've died and they're home with the Lord Jesus now. You know, when my partners, I, I when I started, I was always with the older gentlemen. I was always with the older people. And, and and I was in my early 20s, and I, of course, I was a hip hop artist. I was an evangelist, but I always rolled with older people. And along the way, those older people, a lot of them died. And so are we remembering those people, the children of our partners? 
Are we honoring? Are we calling them up? Are we checking on them? Are we asking them if they're okay? Are we calling them to say happy Thanksgiving? Are we calling them to say Merry Christmas? Are we calling them to invite them to the revival? Are we calling them to say, I'm just praying for you? Are we calling them to say, I remember your daddy's teaching? He said, is there anybody, my friend Jonathan has died, but is there anybody from the house that, that is still alive so that I could show them kindness, so that I could have mercy on them, so that I could continue that covenant relationship that I had with Jonathan, that I could continue it with his children and his grandchildren, that I could pour out my favor. And there was of the house of Saul, a servant whose name was Ziba. And when he had called him unto David, the king said unto him, are you Ziba? And he said, your servant is he. And the king said, is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, John, Jonathan has yet a son which is lame on his feet. Sometimes when leaders and pastors and people in ministry die and, 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 they, and they leave this earth, Sometimes the children, it's hard for the children of those mighty men and women of God to make adjustments and to flow. So it's important that we be people of covenant so that we could grab those children of our partners and say, wait a minute here. Your dad used to preach. Your dad used to sing worship. Your dad used to give to the poor. Your dad used to help the prostitutes. Your daddy used to feed the homeless. Your daddy used to, used to give to the widows, used to go into the prisons, used to go into missions. So it's our duty. Before we enter into 2024, we have to have our covenant mentality on right now and remember those that are lame. What does the word lame mean? Right now, there's mighty men and women of God that are the children of our partners that through pandemic and through trial and losing their leaders and losing their apostle and losing their man of God and their woman of God, they feel dejected. You feel they feel broken hearted, depressed, sad, unhappy, down in the dumps. So if we're going to walk in covenant with God, we have to honor our earthly covenant with our partners that have gone home to be with the Lord. And, 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 and God wants to expand our ministries, but we need to go and we need to say and make the phone calls. We need to make the visits. He says, he's, Jonathan still has one son, but he's lame in his feet. And the king said unto him, where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, behold, he is in the house of Micah, the son of Emil. Verse 5, then King David sent and fetched. Him out of the house of my chair, the son of Emil. This is our season that we fetch. This is our season that we bring people that are broken hearted. That we just say, you know what? You're rolling with me from now on. I know you miss your daddy. I know you miss your mama. I know you miss your prayer partners. I know you miss the senoras that used to pray for you. I know you used to miss going with your man of God. I know you miss your apostle. I know you miss the pioneers. I know you miss the one who started the church. I know you miss the one who led you to the Lord. I know you miss them. But now it's my season and I'm in a place of authority. And, and, and you know what? The same way that they received you as spiritual sons and spiritual daughters, I receive you and I bring you here. And you're a part of my family from now on. You might be brokenhearted 
You, you might not know how to walk with God no more. You might have lost your way. That man must have broke your heart. That woman broke your heart. But you know what? It's okay. We're here to bring you back. We're here to bring you back to the fellowship. We're here to bring you back to joy. We're here to bring you back to be to, to be excited again. And, and we're going to marry you. Not like, oh, are, are we getting married? No. It's like when the families come together. Cassandra, it's like when the families come together, when when there's a marriage that takes place, the families come together. God wants families to come together, and that's covenant. 2 Samuel 9, verse 6. I see you, Esmeralda Suazo. I see you. It says, Now when Mephbosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was coming to David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephbosheth, and he answered, Behold your servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake, and will restore you. Guys, God is about to restore some people, but he's, he needs to use us. God is going to restore some people, but God needs to use us to restore them. What does it mean to restore? The word restore means to refresh. There's some people out there, Miss Carrie, that need to be repaired right now. Maybe your heart is broken right now. Maybe, maybe you've been trampled on and stomped on and taken advantage of and dishonored and disrespected or spoken in a negative manner, but we're here to say, Come back to the house of God. Come back to the fellowship because God wants to refresh you. I know your daddy was somebody of authority. I know your man of God. I know your woman of God were people of authority. But in the name of Jesus, God wants to take us to a new level in 2024. We might all be going through trial. We might all be going through craziness. But God doesn't want us to focus on the craziness. God doesn't want us to focus on the trial. God wants us to focus on refreshing and repairing and causing people to come back to God and bringing people back and, and bringing people to mind. All of a sudden, it's like, wait a minute, before we enter 2024, I want to pray for all my best friends that I haven't seen in years, mighty God. All those people that have hurt us in the past, I want to pray for them, mighty God. All my prayer partners, the entire SOG crew, Esmeralda Suazo and all the Suazos, all my family, Melissa's family, everybody we know from Alaska, everybody we know from Arizona. Before we go into 2024, Father, in the name of Jesus, we before I receive this new covenant message revelation that you want to give me, before you give it to me, God, give me the covenant message, mighty God, of honoring our partners, honoring our friendships, mighty God, bringing them back. Through, they might be going through depression right now. Oh, the world is so crazy, but it's our job to remember them in our prayers. Covenant. The, the, this, this, this prince, Jonathan's son, He's devastated. He's wounded. He lost his grandfather, the king. He lost his dad, the prince. And all of a sudden, his house is in rags. He comes to King David. He came to King David. Verse 8 says, and he bowed himself and said, what is your servant, that you should look upon such a dead dog as I am. He considered himself a dead dog. Right now, there's people out there that were on fire for God. They were on the worship team. They, they, they were uh, associate pastors. They were church planners. They had a 501c3. They were feeding everybody. There's leaders that were on top that were leading and had the authority and were giving back. But now through the trial, they lost loved ones or maybe whatever crisis that hit them the hardest. All of a sudden, they see themselves as dead dogs. That's how the prince 
Jonathan's son saw himself. What is a dead dog? Executed. When, 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 when you lose somebody that is so powerful in your life, that spirit of depression tries to attack and you feel like you've died prematurely without fulfilling your purpose in life. Very, It just came suddenly. And there's people out there right now. The trial is so heavy. The fire, the flames, the accusations, the falsifications, the disrespect, dishonor, uh, the talking, the slander, the 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 hurtful messages, the 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 just the nastiness. And there's a there's a group of people that at one time they were the next in line to take the ministry, but the attacks came so heavy that now they feel like they've been executed. Now they feel like they've died prematurely. Now they feel like they are a, a dead dog. If And if you dissect a dead dog in Hebrew, it means a male prostitute blessings to all of our people from the great state of new mexico the entire lowrider culture gospel to all of our people from espana santa god bless you we welcome you in the name of jesus to be a dead dog in hebrew means a male prostitute he went from being a prince to all of a sudden the mentality that he was a male prostitute, somebody that's on the streets that's doing prostitution, they do whatever it takes to make money. They'll, they'll do it all. They'll do things that they never thought they, that they would do. And here we have the Christian Americans, the Christians here in the United States of America that at one time they were next in line to succeed to have succession into that office of pastor, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, whatever, to take the ministry and something happened so insane, crazy. All of a sudden, the leaders are gone and the next in line, they have the spirit of the male prostitute on them and they're doing whatever it takes to, to make it. Whatever it takes just to live day by day instead of having the Christ-like, the, the, the life filled with the Holy Spirit, a, a life of faith, a life of Jesus, a life of trusting God. Instead of having that, they are in depression. They are dead dogs that feel executed. And it's our job before we go into 2024 New Mexico, before we go into 2024 the state of Colorado before we go into the uh, 2024 state of Hawaii before we go into 2024 state of Alaska before we go into 2024 we have to remember our partners and their children that they left behind and we got to check up on them and we need to pray them and, and we need to pray for them and cry out for them in the name of Jesus David restores him and assigns land. All, all King Saul's land went to Jonathan's son, and David assigned servants. Now it's our job to restore people. This is our season. If we're going to walk in covenant with God, God is saying, what are you doing with your covenant partnerships on earth? What are you doing with the leader that you walked with for years? Are you still honoring his ministry even after they've passed away? Are you still honoring their children? Are you still honoring their grandchildren? Are you restoring people? Are, are you with the anointing on your life? Are, are you healing these people? Tonight's message is titled, Never Forget Covenant. And 
I really feel that last week I was going to teach on the subject of covenant. And as I was about to, to get online, I really felt like, no, -uh. I need, I need a no covenant. I, it, it started that spirit of covenant. The message started just going deeper in my heart and it just, I just wanted to hear God more. I wanted to just get on my face more. I wanted to fast some more. I wanted to just seek him out and ask like never before. I, I just I just wanted to know more. I want to know more. I want wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, mighty God, because it's such an honor to share your word, mighty God. And I want to make sure that I catch it before I give it. I got to catch it. Oh, Lord Jesus, what kind of what kind of covenant message are you giving me? And today God's like, do you remember your your pastors, your pastor that passed away? Do you remember his children? Barnabas found Saul. And 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 now what we're going to talk about is God is going to raise some of you up to go into revivals. God is going to all your dreams are going to come to pass. God is, God is going to answer your prayers. God is going to take you to new heights and new elevations. And uh, everything that you've been praying for is going to come to pass in 2024. You might have been crying for years, for 20, 30, 40 years. And now God's saying, now is the time. But you cannot forget covenant. And what do I mean by that is as you elevate as you go into the holy hills of God, as you go into that next chapter of your life, as the new windows of heaven and opportunities open up for you, you can't forget your little partners. You can't forget your little sidekicks. You can't forget those people. If they just prayed one day with you, if they just prayed for one year and one season with you, you cannot, for, we cannot forget our partners. Acts chapter 11, verse 19. It says, Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the Lord, and the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which were at Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch. What is the word Barnabas, son of rest? I pray that, that we would grab this message, that we would become a son of rest, meaning a son of encouraging others, a son of comforting others, a son of exhorting others. When, 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 I get hit so much, man. I get I get things coming at me every day. I get all kinds of craziness, all kinds of, and I have to be a son of rest. I have to be reminded every day, every second of the day that I am a child of God and my job in life is to cause others to be at peace and to be at rest. I can't focus on none of the drama. Verse 23, who when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them all with the purpose of heart, they would cleave unto the Lord. See, all of a sudden Barnabas leaves Jerusalem and he goes into the mission field and he sees the grace of God everywhere you go. What does the grace of God mean? He started seeing joy and, and loveliness and a grace of speech. All of a sudden, people were speaking as, as, as oracles of God. All of a sudden, people were prophesying and it was coming to pass. People started having influence. In revival, there's influence. 
That's why when everybody's mad and everybody's gossiping and nobody likes them and nobody, everybody's trying to hold the contacts and the connections and that's not revival. When we go with the Native American communities and they invite us to revival, I always know when it's an authentic revival because joy is in the air and people love each other and and people that were one day years ago they were drunkards all of a sudden they're speaking with the grace of speech and influence upon their hearts and their words and, and they're governed by the spirit of divine grace they're not they're not crazy people no more they're not them gangsters no more they're not those drunkards or on drugs no more, but they're all of a sudden they're speaking with great levels of joy and respect and honor and peace. And you could see the peace on their lives. And he exhorted them all that the purpose of heart, they would cleave unto the Lord. What does it mean to cleave? It, he went into revival, into the mission field, and, and he told everybody to cleave to God. I want you to remain. If you're out there and you lost your mind, I, I beg you, stay with God. Continue with God. Remain in this place of prayer. Maybe you don't want to talk right now on this live stream. Maybe you don't want to go to church right now. Maybe you don't feel ready to go and, and call your old prayer partners I want you to cleave to God. I want you to stay in the house of prayer. I want you to stay next to the altar. I want you to stay where the word is good. I want you to stay with the worship. Remain with God. If you could hear my voice out there, family, this is a covenant message. I want you to remain. God wants me to go on the rooftop and tell the children of my partners, to tell all my lifelong friendships, to tell all my people that I've worked with for years, maybe you haven't heard from me in a long time. Maybe you haven't received a call from me in a long time. I want to encourage you, stay with God. I want to encourage you, remain in the house of God. Stay in prayer, my people. If you could hear my voice, I beg you, before we enter into 2024, I want you to stay. You don't have to stay with me. Stay with God. Cleave to God. Make an alliance with God. Make a covenant with God. That's, that's my covenant agreement is to tell you, cleave to God. Stay with God. I know the trials are coming hard. I know they want to lock you up for life never to come out. I know they're lying about you. Stay with God. I know it's crazy, Esmeralda. Stay with God. I know you're out there in Hawaii by yourself. Continue with Jesus. Stay with Jesus. Verse 24 says, for he was a good man. What is a good man? To be a good man or a good woman out there, Miss Carol, you're useful to God. Your you're, life is hard. But if we're children of God, we have to be good people, meaning we have to have the joy of the Lord. We, we have to be happy. We have to be agreeable. There's so many people who are like, hey, brother, in the name of Jesus, I want my children to come home. Oh, I don't know. I can't agree. What? I need agreeance right now. Hey, I, I need my bills paid. Can somebody in this house pray with me? Oh, I can't right now. To be a good person is to say, Miss Carol from Alaska, I agree that your daughter, in the name of Jesus, is going to receive all those finances so that she could go get her education in missions, in urban missions at YWAM in the Hawaii base. I come in agreement. I stand in agreement in the name of Jesus. I stand in agreement. I know you're in Alaska, but I stand in agreement in the name of Jesus. 
It says he was a good man, Barnabas, full of the Holy Ghost, full of the Holy Ghost. What is full of the Holy Ghost means? Filled up, thoroughly permeated, covering in every part, lacking nothing. When, when, when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you lack nothing. We don't go over there, oh brother, uh, my 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 car transmission went out and, and 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 you know, I got all this and that and oh, I'm out here doing revival but I got to pay my bills and filled with the Holy Ghost means lacking nothing. Filled with the Holy Ghost and the faith and assurance, belief, conviction of the truth. And much people were added unto the Lord. Now pay attention. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus to seek Saul. Let me say that again. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. In other words, there's some of us were going to a new level. And, and ministry opportunities like never before are going to fall on our lap. But God doesn't want us to go by ourselves. He wants us to go and look for them souls that are out there in the wilderness and say, brother, remember 10 years ago when we used to do missions? Remember back in the day when your daddy used to take us to Mexico prisons? Remember? Come on now. It's your turn now. Let's go. It's time for you to come with us. We used to operate well 10, 20 years ago. I never forgot that. Come on. Get up. It said that he... He went out to seek Saul. He went to search out to make diligent search, careful search. This is the season. If we are going to go into 2024 before, guys, we need to make an effort that we go get all our armor bearers, that we make those phone calls to our prayer people. Maybe you don't know what they're going through. Maybe they're going through depression. Maybe, maybe they took a wrong turn somewhere. Maybe maybe, maybe they, they, they started working with people that took them a different direction that didn't make no sense. This is our turn, guys, before we enter into 2024 to carefully search out all of our prayer people that we've worked with for years and, and refresh them and, and fix them and bring them back and hug on them and be happy. We All of a sudden, we haven't seen people in 10 years and we call them just to complain. No. Brother, I'm calling you right now because I haven't heard from you in 15 years. And, and I just want you to know that, man, I have been going through a major trial in life. But I, I, I kept on because I never forgot how your dad treated me and how your dad kept on during trials. And he started churches all over the world. I never forgot that. And because I never forgot that, I never quit. I never allowed that to mess me up. But you know what, brother? Before I enter into 2024, I just want to say I love you. I just want to say, man, I miss you. I just want to say I'm so proud that you are my brother. And I pray that maybe one day that maybe we could do ministry again together. Maybe we could just go out and have coffee together. Maybe we could just see each other together. Brother, I got so much I want to share. I, I, I want to introduce you to my wife i want you i want to introduce you to my granddaughters i want to introduce you to a new level of jesus that i'm walking in brother i've never forgot about you and i have you in my heart i have you in my prayers and it took me nobody had your phone number no i couldn't find you on facebook i couldn't find you on instagram i couldn't find you on the internet but brother i did a careful search and i found you and now that I found you, I will never let you go. I will never let you go. And when he had found him, see, guys, we have to have a heart to find our partners, our partners, children. What does it mean to find when he had found it, return to a place to understand
When he had found him, he understood, man, I didn't know you were going through this. I didn't know you were lonely. I didn't know your family died. I didn't know you were in depression all these years. It says he brought him unto Antioch where, where the revival was taking place, where, where the masses were getting saved, where all the Gentiles and all them heathens and cholos and gang members, and they were getting saved. He didn't need to go get Saul. He could have done it himself and been successful and, 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 and a good reputation and, and revival and the anointing and Jesus and salvations. He could have done all that. By himself. But he went and carefully sought out Saul. It says he brought him. He, he, he accompanied him. He guided him. He directed him. He, he carried. We're going to have to carry some of these people. God wants us to go and find our covenant partners. And we might have to carry them and be a burden bearer. And carry their burdens. And direct them and guide them. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the, the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. God wants us to find our old partners so that we could gather together and pray and come together to meet and to have hospitality in the Lord and worship God with all of our hearts together once again. That's that's the new level. That's the, the, the new covenant for me for 2024 to enter in, to find our partners. Never forget covenant is our message tonight, guys. And I pray that that you walk in it. That you walk in it in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. There was a, a, uh, a story in the Bible. And... David had gone out to war with his mighty men and he left his, they let all of them left their families at Ziklag while David and his men went out to war An enemy had come and they had, they had taken their wives and their children captive. And so when David and his mighty men came back to Ziklag, they found that their families were gone and taken into captivity and David's own men wanted to stone him and kill him. But David sought out the Lord. And while David was seeking out God, the Lord tells him, chase after them. You will not lose anybody. So David and his mighty man, they go on this trip to get their families back. And along the way, many of his men got tired. And they had to rest while David and his other men continued on their campaign. And it reminds me a lot of ministry that you could be a big group of people, but along the way, People get tired. And we need to remember covenant that it doesn't matter if they were with us for a year, five years, 10 years, 20 years. We have to honor everybody equally. We have to love people equally. David divides the spoils. His men were faint. What does it mean to be faint? 
Cassandra, to be faint means to be unclear, hardly noticeable, quiet. Sometimes we're with people and they're hardly noticeable. They're weak. They're quiet. Maybe they're not out there in the street on the corner with the blowhorn, but they're very thin. Hard to hear, hard to make out, low, soft, and gentle. They, Not everybody's going to be a battle axe out there in the front, re ready to just dive in and attack. But some of the team might be hardly noticeable. First Samuel 30 verse 21 says, and David came to the 200 men, which were so faint that they could not follow David, whom they made also to abide at the brook bazaar. And they went forth to meet David and to meet the people that were with them. And then David came near to the people. He saluted them. And I'm going to leave it right there. It's a lot. There's people that. That they didn't make it this far they they fell off the side years ago maybe even last year maybe only a few months ago but those are the people that we have to salute what does it mean to salute that no matter how they left maybe they got tired maybe they gave up we still have to salute them and consult with them and, and seek information and, and ask them for permission and ask them for their opinion. And we still got to pray with them. And that's the whole message of covenant, my people. God wants us to God wants us to walk in covenant and not forget our partners if you're out there and 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 you got hurt or offended and you're like man i i can't i can't go to that church no more they hurt me i i gave them everything i used to mop and sweep and clean i used to i you know i followed the vision i ran with the vision i i i i, I never complained i never murmured i never said nothing i was soft-spoken i I, I I just said amen. I was there for agreement. I was there for agreement. Um, I I I'm, I was not a quitter, but but you know what? Some people got in there. Uh, they didn't have the joy. They weren't uh, leaders, and they just hurt, hurt, hurt people, hurt people, and I left. Tonight, guys. I've been walking with God since 1996. Took me a couple years to, I was like that wild, like that wild horse that was, that couldn't be tamed, but God got a hold of me. I pray that, that tonight that we would remember all the people that have ever prayed for us that were sincere. I, I know there's a lot of gospel hip hop rap people that we've worked with. I'm not talking about that group of people at all. I'm talking about the prayer partners, the ones that, you know, being a missionary or being an evangelist or being a group that travels, we've had people that have got us hotel rooms, that have bought our dinners, paid for our gas, paid for our flights, laid hands on us, prayed for us, prayed for our families. We prayed for their families for years and years and years and years. Father, 
just bring to remembrance, mighty God, all of our prayer partners, our prayer people, oh Lord. Before we enter into 2024, mighty God, we lift up all of those people, mighty God, that we worked with, mighty God, even if it was just for a moment. Forgive us, mighty God, from that we turned and we never looked back, mighty God. Help me to be like David to bring the children of our partners back home, mighty God that my table will be their table, that my home will be their home, and that they will always have a, a prayer covering with us. To all of the children, mighty God, that our partners have gone home to be with you, Lord, I, I pray, mighty God, that they would trust us. And this will always be their home. My family will always be their family in the name of Jesus. To all of those that are lame and, and weak and depressed. And they used to be leaders. And they see themselves as a dead dog. Doing whatever it takes to make money. Father, I pray that you bring that group of people back right now, mighty God. Bring them, mighty God. Bring them so that we could restore them, so that we could love them and honor them and speak life over them, mighty God. And cover them and thank them. Father, help me to be like Barnabas, mighty God. That before this next great move of your revival, of your anointing, of your Holy Spirit begins in my life, mighty God. With great influence, mighty God. Great grace. Before this next stage of my life begins, O oh Lord. Open up my eyes and my heart, mighty God, to all of our people, mighty God, that, that are out there by themselves, that are out there in the wilderness by themselves, so that we can go and bring them home, mighty God, so that we can lock arms, so that we can walk, mighty God, with knit hearts in a league, in a covenant. And Father, for all of those, mighty God, that have fallen, for all of those that grew tired, mighty God, on this journey, we salute them in the name of Jesus. We salute all those, mighty God, that have walked away from us because they grew tired. Bring them back, O oh Lord, so that we can salute them and honor them and pray with them and ask for their advice, mighty God. Covenant. <sighs> Praise you, mighty God. We love you, mighty God. Help us never to forget covenant, mighty God. To all those, those people that have helped us out, mighty God, bless them, keep them. Let your face shine upon them, mighty God. Esmeralda Suazo from Colorado, originally from Colorado, now in Hawaii. Amen. I stand in agreement. Thank you, God, for where you have led us and all you have placed in our lives. And thank you, God, for Pastor Robert and Melissa and all the familia and the blessing 
they have been in my family's life and this next season. Let your will be done. Love you all. Mele Kali Kamaka. Amen. Thank you, Ez, Esmeralda. Carol from Alaska says, praise you, God, and thank you. We come in agreement. We love you guys out there. Jesus loves you. Keep us in prayer. You know, all day today, I'm like, God, God, like, I'm in covenant with you. I'm in covenant with you, Jesus. And he's like, but are you in covenant with your people? And I'm like, yeah, I am. But God, I'm in covenant with you, Jesus. I'm in co-. And he's like, have you went and got all those people that have left you that have fallen along the way? Yeah, Jesus. But Jesus, I'm in covenant with you. And he's like, did you go restore people? I'm like, hmm, okay. Can't forget all of our co- covenant partners. Sandra Goodwin says, stand in agreement, Father, God, amen. We love you guys out there. There's some people on on here that I know that you're battling right now. Maybe you're battling in your marriage. We just speak blessings over you, covenant agreement over you in the name of Jesus. We still believe in in, in covenant. Uh, Esmeralda Suazo all the way in, in Hawaii, we still believe in covenant. Sandra Goodwin in the city of Alamosa, Colorado. Uh, Man, we are in covenant with you together. We are in covenant with God Almighty. Uh, God is the greatest, the highest authority in in, in everywhere in the name of Jesus. Uh, To all of our people out there uh, in New Mexico, Miss Joanne Lolo, Lowrider, God bless you. Uh, Covenant, covenant, covenant. And uh, we love you guys very much. If anybody needs prayer, please send us prayer requests. We want to encourage you. uh, Don't forget. Do not forget covenant, guys. And, and, And use this time to think about all those people that have worked with you, that you've prayed with, that maybe they relocated and they moved to a different state. Maybe they moved to a different part of the world. Um, Reach out to them and let them know that you're praying for them. Let them know that you think about them in the name of Jesus. So we love you guys. Keep us in prayer. Tonight is our Tuesday night Bible study. Uh, This Saturday, this Saturday we will be, let me see. Oh, Jesus. This Saturday we will be at Set Free At Set Free Church, right there, Set Free Church Oceanside presents on December 23rd, 2023 from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Navidad and El Barrio at Libby Park. Uh, There's going to be bikes and toy giveaways and free food and grocery bags and uh, dance contests and music by SOG crew. There's going to be a bounce house candy bags cash prizes and santa and so guys that's going to be on this saturday the 23rd guys keep it in prayer and uh we love you guys very much jesus loves you i love you my wife melissa loves you and i thank god for you guys and and uh keep us in prayer guys so on behalf of the sog crew um I'm going to use the rest of this time until January 1st to make phone calls and call a lot of people that, uh, you know, aren't with us right now, rolling with us right now. Maybe they've moved on and, uh, you know, I'm going to use this time to, to just reach out in the name of Jesus. So love you guys. And See you guys next Tuesday. Amen. Send me some prayer requests, guys, and feedback, whatever you want. Love you. Yo, yo.